Good morning, Cultivate family. I hope you're all having a good week so far. It's weird. It feels like it's been two weeks since I've talked to you all because I was on tour with my band. But in that two weeks, I did record a podcast for you, but it wasn't in real time. So I didn't actually do it last week. I cheated. I'm sorry. But I have actually really missed it. If you're listening to this in real time when I've released it, then I've actually got one slot left for my September intake of one-to-one coaching. I can take one more person on. I'm super excited. Got a few new members joining the team. It's going to be amazing. Head to the show notes and fill in the application form or send me a DM on Instagram. And let's see if I can help you and if Fuzz Culture Club is going to be a good fit for you as your fitness community. So I'm back off the Cult Dreams tour. It was about 10 days long, played a bunch of shows and finished at Arctangent Festival in Bristol. Every single show was sick and Cult Dreams haven't toured for a year since last August. So I was buzzing, but in true unlucky Lucinda fashion, I got ill on the first day. Now, I don't really get sick a lot with that kind of cold and flu symptoms I haven't for ages so it was really really frustrating for this to happen literally on the first day of a tour and the thing is about cult dreams tours as I told you in the last episode on stress is that I tour manage I drive I sell merch as well as perform so I I ask a lot of my body I didn't end up training as you can hear I'm not actually 100% now either I have never been asked so much by my TikTok followers um, if I have started testosterone I haven't I just have a low voice anyway and when I get sick my voice definitely drops a couple of octaves when you factor in a tour in a band where I shout and scream a lot it definitely just does sound like I have injected a ton of testosterone into my body But unfortunately not, I'm still waiting for that. I'm just really sick. I do definitely feel like I'm on the mend soon, so I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, tomorrow is the day I can maybe start training again. While I was on tour, my dog Aubrey also got sick, which was really unlucky because my partner had to, like, take her to the vets and deal with all of that without me, which is not ideal, really, is it? So me and little Aubrey are feeling very sorry for ourselves and have been the last couple of weeks. However, I did get to go and see Boy Genius on Tuesday in Halifax and oh my gosh, it was amazing. All of the queers just descended on Halifax and it was lovely. The venue is beautiful. I got to see loads of friends, loads of Fuzz Culture Club and Cultivate people were there as well, which was wonderful. It was so wholesome. They were amazing and it was one of those shows that just like made me want to come back to my studio and write loads of songs. It made me feel great about music which is a hard feeling for me to get a lot of the time because sometimes I can become a little bit resentful and bitter after so many years in the industry. So yeah, I have had a very busy week of music. I am very, very glad to be back at my desk in my studio, back with my little family, back doing my thing and back on the podcast. So this week, we're going to talk about smashing your mornings. Now, mornings are important because they do set us up to have a good day. However, there is a big misconception that you've got to do loads of stuff, perfectly aesthetically pleasing things, according to social media to actually win your morning and set yourself up for a good start, which is absolutely not true. You can keep it very, very simple. This year, I read this book called The Miracle Morning, which a few people have recommended to me and mentioned. And I read it with the view of like, this might be a cool thing to recommend to my future clients, my current clients that struggle with their mornings. And I'm not going to lie, it is a bit of a cult. So I'm not recommending you that book at all. Probably don't read it. I'm going to tell you what it's about in a nutshell now anyway. It's basically a way to schedule your mornings into really short little productive spurts. So the concept is that you'll maybe take an hour before you have to actually, you know, be at work, travel to work, leave the house. And in that hour, you might do a bunch of little things for you a little bit of self-work, a little bit of self-care, maybe movement as well. And so after I read this book, I tried it exactly as it was written. And what I soon realized is that for me, I was actually trying to do too much. However, the concept itself of just setting yourself up for a great morning is very, very valid and very, very important. And it's one of the things I talk a lot about with my people. However, there is definitely a line where it can get a bit 
rise and grind a bit hustle culture and that is definitely not what we want not here anyway as you all know that is not what we are about in cultivate in fuzz culture club but what is important in being able to smash your mornings what i've actually learned through experimenting with different morning routines trying to do different things is that i often try to do far too much and expected far too much of myself flashback to the episode on overcommitting that's a common theme for me as you might have noticed it might be the same for you What I did realize that was so valuable to me is that I don't need a fancy morning routine. I actually just need a good block of time between waking up and starting work because it just takes me a while to come into myself, to wake up, to feel like I can be useful to people. And obviously a huge part of what I do is being useful for people. And at first I thought an hour was enough. But what I realized is ideally two hours of me time before I start work is actually really crucial and it makes me more productive and it makes me a better coach. Now, two hours actually sounds like a lot and it is. And obviously I'm self-employed so I can move things around so it works for me and I know everybody can't do that. But it's definitely worth thinking about how early you want to get up before you have to start doing anything and what is actually helpful to you. And the key here is just to think ahead. Think about what you want to get out of your morning, execute it. And then, of course, as I always preach, be flexible with it. Because obviously for me, I can't get up every day two hours before I need to start stuff, depending on plans, depending what work stuff I've got on, depending on what social stuff I've got on. And a lot of the time, my workload is probably too big to do that. So I've definitely had to consider a flexible approach and an ideal approach, and it's always good to have both. So why actually is a morning routine so important? I don't know if you've ever heard the saying, never miss a Monday. It's a little bit hustle culture-y and I don't vibe with it too much, but it is valid to an extent. The thought process behind nailing a Monday is that you set yourself up really well for the rest of the week. And if we apply that to a morning, again, we're setting ourselves up for a good day. And often if we have a hectic morning or a stressful morning or we sleep in, we miss an alarm, we miss a bus, we're late, anything like that, it can put us in a really bad mindset spot for the rest of the day. And obviously a big part of that does come down to mindset because if you have a shit morning and you let that feed into the rest of your day, then it's not going to be a good day. But if we think of our days in quarters and the first quarter of it doesn't go right, we still have three quarters left to still be a good day. So I want to preempt all of this with saying if your morning routine that you are trying to nail for yourself doesn't work out, you still have the rest of the day. It doesn't mean that it's going to spiral out of control and just continue to get more shit. However, if we can set ourselves up in a good place, then that's a nice optimal way for us to start the day. However, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't all have to go to shit if we have a bad morning, because we absolutely are going to have bad mornings where things don't go to plan. The other good thing about having a little bit of time to yourself in the morning is no one is asking anything of you in the morning, unless you have kids or a dog. But for the most part, if you don't have anyone depending on you, no one wants anything from you before you start work, before you start your day. So being up early and being able to do something for yourself, even if it's small, even if it's just something little that doesn't take very long, the chances are no one's going to bother you in that time. And there's something really nice about that. If you do have kids, maybe factoring in your wake up time before that may be a factor. However, I know it's not as simple as that. So maybe that morning routine actually kicks in after you've showed up for your kids, you know, whatever is going to work best in that situation. The only person that depends on me in the morning is Aubrey. And all she wants to do is get up, eat and pass the fuck out. And then I have to take her for a walk. But the walk is actually part of my morning routine and I love doing it. So that always works for me really well and is a pretty crucial part of my morning routine that keeps me feeling good, that keeps me feeling well. And it kind of allows me to wake up and slowly shift my head into coach mode. So planning our morning routine, we almost want to work backwards a little bit. We want to think about firstly what we want to get out of our morning before we start work, before we start going to college or whatever that thing might be that we do with our days. Ideally, we want to create this neat little stack of habits that become muscle memory and all pour and feed into one another. 
So the first few questions to ask yourself is, are you going to do your training in the morning? Do you want to be able to sit down and have a leisurely breakfast? Are you going to go on a walk? Do you need to shower? Do you want to prep any sort of lunch? Do you want to journal? Do you want to read? Or do you just literally want to be able to get up, have a breakfast, make a nice coffee and crack on with your day? Because what we need to think about is how long all these things are going to take. Now, a lot of my people will train in the morning before work because the gym is less busy and they like the feeling that they get when they smash that morning workout. So a lot of people do. It makes you feel great. Big hit of endorphins before you start your day. There's something really nice about smashing that workout in the morning and knowing that you're coming back home on an evening and that time is yours to just chill and unwind. So big fan of the morning workout if it's an option for you and if you don't have too much to contend with in a morning anyway, like people that depend on you. Once you've established what you want that morning to look like, you've thought about that little stack of habits that all feed into each other. Get up, brush your teeth, head out the door to train, come back and shower, eat breakfast, head to work. Or for people that train later in the day, it might be get up, grab a coffee, go for a walk. You might want to include 10 minutes of reading or five minutes of journaling within that. Anything goes, but it doesn't have to be complicated. You don't need to get that 5 a.m. ice bath. Cue back to episode one. Let's keep it simple and think of some simple things that are going to make you feel good that you want to get out of your morning. When that is solidified, maybe we've written it down, maybe we've mapped it out in our minds a little bit. We want to now think about working backwards because the next important thing is sleep and is winding down the night before. We've got to consider all of those factors as well. There's lots of things that you can do the night before to set yourself up to absolutely smash your morning. One of those things can be prepping a breakfast or even just getting a bowl and a coffee cup and a bag of coffee out on the side so it's all there for you to go to. When you get up, you're taking a little bit of the guesswork out of it. If you're someone that goes to work every day, you might want to prep your clothes the night before. And if you're someone that trains, you might want to prep your work clothes and your workout clothes so you can just roll out of bed and into that outfit. What are you going to do the night before to set yourself up for an awesome morning? One of the things I ask my people in their check-ins every Sunday is if you could do one thing now, to action yourself for the week, what would it be? And a lot of the time it's like lay out workout clothes, plan breakfast, plan food for the week, look at my schedule, anything like that. Some people say I need to chill and unwind a little bit before I start my week. All of these things feed into your morning, so it's really important to consider what your wind down and evening routine is as well. And that's definitely one for another podcast. So I'll add that to my list of podcasts to make for you. Now, two things that I want to mention with your morning routine that feeds into the flexibility we want in our sustainable lifestyles is that we don't just have to do this for the weekdays if you work a nine to five. We are creatures of habit and we generally tend to thrive off routine. So if you enjoy the structure of having that little morning routine, Do it on a weekend as well if it makes you feel good. And it might be that you move it around a little bit and it might be that it's a bit more laid back, but it can still be exactly the same. Just because it's a weekend, you don't have to change it up if it's something in your life that brings you joy and makes you feel good. The other thing that I want to mention is consider your social plans and what they might be the night before, because that's absolutely going to have a knock-on effect of you in the morning. So for example, if you're going to a gig, if you're going out for dinner, if you're going out for drinks, if you're going to have a late night, you might want to be a little bit more flexy with that morning routine and allow yourself to get a little bit more sleep. So that might mean swapping a workout round because you're preempting that you might be a bit more tired or it might be getting in from whatever you're doing and making sure you still prep your breakfast because you know that you're looking out for your future self the next morning and that'll allow you to take a few minutes back here and there and take the guesswork out of things. We don't need to just do it for the days where we're working. We can do it every day, especially if that structure is helpful. 
I know myself and a lot of my neurodivergent people that I work with, we really, really do thrive off structure and routines because a lot of the time out of sight is out of mind for us. So having that little structure, having that neat little stack of habits that we reel off in the morning that become muscle memory is super crucial for us setting ourselves up for a good day. So to summarize, smashing our mornings, the first thing we want to think about is what do we want out of our mornings? What do we want to do with our time before we start our day? How much time do we need? And is that realistic based on how much sleep we get and how much we have to do in a day and what time we start work, what people depend on us, etc, etc. Next up, plan that neat stack of habits and test it. If you test it for a couple of weeks and it works great, amazing. If you try it and it doesn't work, don't keep forcing yourself to do it. Tweak it, adapt it. Have you overcommitted? Are you asking too much of yourself? Or is there a few little things that you need to tweak? Next up, make sure you're working backwards. Things that you do the night before enable you to wake up in a good place. So any sort of prep the night before, whether it's just five minutes laying out workout clothes and getting your breakfast ready, can be the make or break thing with your morning. Because if you sleep through that alarm, but you still can grab a pot of overnight oats out the fridge to take to work, you're still putting yourself in a good spot. You're still taking care of yourself because you have breakfast, you have some fuel. But lastly, and more importantly, how do we pull it back when it's just all going to shit? <laughs> because as I said in the beginning, we're not going to have every morning be perfect. And what we want to avoid is going into fuck it mode. What we want to do instead is pause and regroup. Just because one day or one morning wasn't great, or maybe it's a few, it doesn't mean that they all have to be. So if you're weak and your mornings aren't being smashed, you don't feel like it's gone very well, I want you to think about three things. The first thing is what do you need right now in that moment to help you regroup and pick up again? When you think about what you need, how many of those factors can you directly control yourself? If the answer is all of them, then the next question is going to be what can you do about it to regroup yourself and get back into smashing your mornings? The things that you can't control in this situation, whether you've got a really busy week, you have to go into work early, your partner's ill or your dog's ill, like in my situation this week, or there's things that you have to do, like appointments and stuff like that. Those things are happening regardless, so we can either adapt and work around them, or we can panic and let them consume us. Which one do you want to do? Because I'm guessing that working around them and being a bit more flexible with stuff is obviously going to be the one. We don't want to panic about the things that we can't change. So what do you need? What can you control? And what can you do about it to get yourself back into that good spot where we're prepped and getting ready to smash another morning? All we can do is wake up and go again. So with your mornings, it won't always have to be perfect. We can often expect them to be perfect because that byproduct of content creators and social media influencers that make you think they wake up looking beautiful and the curtains just slide open and they float down the stairs and make a delicious coffee out of a £10,000 coffee machine, hashtag gifted, and then they're going to have their smoothie bowl and sit and eat it outside, and then they're going to plunge into an ice bath and float over to their laptop and start their day. This is just not the reality. It's never going to be. And yes, those people can make their mornings look really attractive, but let's just think about the simple things. Going back to what I said at the beginning, what I have learned as an introvert, as a quiet person that likes their own time, is that I definitely need a good one to two hours before I start work. So I will get up early and account for that because that is my time. That is when I can read. It's when I can walk the dog and it's when I can just sit and think. Having that time, especially when you have a pretty busy brain, can be really, really crucial and that for me is just my simple morning routine now. I get up, I sit for a little bit, I might read, I'll make a coffee, I'll have my breakfast and I'll do a dog walk. And I will do that all very leisurely if I've got the time and if I've not completely fucked up my sleep or had a really intense week because obviously sometimes that does happen. When that can't happen, I have a short version of that which is going to be a lot less sitting around and a lot less reading and maybe a shorter walk but I'm essentially still doing something for myself. And the walk for me 
is the non-negotiable thing. It's also the non-negotiable thing for Aubrey, but she doesn't know that, but it is because dogs need exercise. So I hope that's been helpful for you all. I want you to think about what you can do for yourself to make your mornings awesome. I want you to think about the simple things that you can do for yourself that are going to make you feel good that then when you actually do start your working day or when you start college or studying or whatever it is that you do, you can feel good about yourself because you've done a couple of things that make you feel awesome. And when you feel like that, the rest of the day, you're going to be productive. You're going to be focused. You're going to have a much better mindset and mood. So set up those little non-negotiables for yourself. Don't worry about making them super fancy or elaborate. Take it step by step, keep it simple, trial and error, and as always, be super, super flexible with it. And lastly, if you're really struggling to set up that morning routine and you're listening to this and you think, oh, perfect, I'll start on Monday. Start now, start tomorrow. Just get up and try and see what happens. You're not gonna get anything better out of starting on Monday. Just do it now. Have an amazing rest of your week. Cultivate family, I'm signing out for today. Take it easy.